Hi, I'm Mark, producer of Roundtable, a TV series born here in New York City at the legendary Manhattan Neighborhood Network Studios. The exchange of ideas is important, and that is why we bring to you the following presentation. Please watch. Welcome to Single Shot Show at Manhattan Neighborhoods Network. Uh, we already discussed and seen uh, amazing works of Michael Calovita, and this time he actually did something remarkable. He brought this mysterious camera he is using for creating his works, and uh, we're ready to continue conversation about modern photography with him. Hello, Michael, and then once again, welcome back to our studio. Thank you very much for joining us. and. Thank you for bringing this beautiful piece of remarkable equipment that surely contributes a lot to beautiful works you're creating. And uh, it doesn't look like a camera of a journalist, but uh, I know that this uh, objective actually seen quite a few famous faces and uh, you created some very interesting pieces with uh, celebrities uh, in, in them. So let's uh, talk a little bit about it. Let's see how it works photographing somebody who is famous on uh, some something like this. With the 8x10 view camera, uh, yes, I've created many portraits of, you know, super well-known, you know, societal icons even. Many celebrities from Hollywood, many NBA stars. I've used it again and again. And what was important for me now at this point in my career is that you know I've established Calavito 21 fundamental principles of pure photography yeah. in the very beginning and we're going back 10 years 15 years even 20 years ago I was on many radio shows maybe up to a hundred and a number of TV shows as well and then the producers of the shows typically wanted to show off and to highlight the celebrities because the celebrities command the most amount of attention and people tend to want to hear about the photo shoots with the celebrities and that was always the like first concern really for the producers that you know would put me on their programs mm -hmm. so now for me it's gotten you know to a better place in that I respect celebrities of society, they're of super course. successful. And the most important thing for me, when I shot world famous artists, some of the biggest names that you can imagine, I try not to name drop. On our previous episodes, we've had some of those images rolling behind us of the superstars. And it's not that I'm so against name dropping, but I like the attention to be brought to what I do. I'm an artist, I create fine art, and I'm very grateful that I've had, you know, many of these celebrities in my portfolio where I could, you know, share the spotlight and get attention through them. But again, I now have a favorite faces category on my website, mm -hmm. and it's particularly useful for me as an artist because search engines and the digital domain, as we discussed last mm -hmm. time, yes. which is crucial for all artists to be able to present their work, now these celebrities are seen and search engines draw a lot of attention to me as an artist. So I really, really like that. But the most important thing for me, again, as an artist is to inspire and reach people. And I was amazed, even up till present, when the people we're speaking about would first get wind of what I do. And because what I do is fairly unique and you know exciting, mm -hmm. they would agree to shoot with me in the first place. So that was the first major accomplishment for me. And I get like a superstar to say, 
wow, let's work with Carlo Vito, let him create fine art of me. So this camera is, is critical for me because it's 8 by 10. The ground glass, you know, is something that I can compose my image on in the first place. If I, some of our viewers doesn't know, this whole huge square on the back is actually an equivalent of a negative on the film camera. Exactly. The film holder goes in the back here. And when I'm ready to take a picture, it's like any other camera where this giant lens throws a big circle on the back of the ground glass and I see the image. It's inverted and it's upside down, so it's a little tricky to work with. But the advantage of this camera in the very first place is that it's the maximum resolution possible in photography for any artist or photographer. There are bigger cameras, cameras that are 11 by 14 and even 20 by 24 copy cameras, but the technology of the lens resolution is what comes first. Mm -hmm. So even if you use this same lens on a bigger piece of film, you're not achieving sharper results. So this already is plenty big. Indeed. To lug this around and to you know, shoot a portrait of a celebrity is very tricky because I have to first get you in focus. When I like what I see, when I've composed on the ground glass with a focusing loop, and I do that by actually moving the standard in and out mm -hmm. to get the perfect focus, you need the right distance between the lens and the film um, to achieve that. You probably may uh, turn the camera the other way so it would be visible how the focusing is happening. It's actually quite different process from what our viewers normally would use. Uh, and uh, uh, before we got too much into technical details, I just wanted to add another thought to what uh, you were saying about celebrities. In no way trying to downplay the importance of celebrity shots in portfolio of photographer, I actually do believe that uh, for many photographers, their historical shots exactly was of people of stature and of uh, being known. What in my opinion is important is uh, what we mentioned at some point when we were talking, that celebrities actually endorse your uh, art by posing, by believing in it and by supporting you. And uh, we're all human beings and celebrities just as well as anybody else. Absolutely. But because of the admiration directed towards them by the society, they in a way reflection of the opinion of the society. So it's very important, especially for a champion of uh, experimental processes like yourself, to uh, see and hear people who actually reflect what society at large believes actually endorsing it and believing that there is something interesting about it, something that speaks to them. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. an honor to be acknowledged by these people. Not as much as honor, in my opinion. Again, I don't believe in the uh, weighing part of the admiration of celebrities. I hope any celebrities watching our program would forgive me for saying that. But I do believe that their role and their importance in our society is actually bringing a lot of responsibility on them, which a lot of them don't realize but still exercise sure they actually express to millions the opinion of that person from the society that basically center of the bell curve sure because they spoke to so many people because they were so interesting and so important for so many people they actually in a way representing the opinion of the society in large that's why i believe it's so important for experimental artists to uh, hear from somebody of that statue that their art speaks to them. But uh, getting back to focusing, I, you know I, how much I like the equipment, it's really like getting into a toy store for me. And, and one more thing in addition to what you just said, yes. it's also been said forever that images and photography are a documentation and a reflection of history at different intervals and different points. Mm -hmm. So shooting these stars for me is also a great, you know, important thing to do in regard to that, where I'm documenting something at this point in my career as a fine artist. Yes, to get the right focus, as we were saying, I move this standard in and out. There's a set distance between the front and rear standard yeah, so. for each lens. <laughs> if I have a certain focal length, I will 
have to, I mean, there's only one place where the focus is perfect. Yes. The other great advantages of this camera is that, and not just the size, which is all important for me, is that there are angular displacements. I can essentially move this horizontally backwards and forwards, oh, or so I can you, raise so this. So you basically have lens baby built in. I have complete perspective control. This and for an a, example, this is fascinating. let's say I'm shooting something architecturally, a building, mm -hmm. and I don't want to point the camera upward mm -hmm. because if I do so, on the ground glass in the final image, it's going to look like the building is leaning. Exactly. With a view camera, I can simply raise the front lens to get yeah. the top of the building. So you have both tilt shift lens and lens baby built into this it, design. This it, is fascinating. Exactly. The parallel displacements are for keeping architectural perfection and, and non, you know, linear curvature. And then the others are for changing the shape and size of objects. I mean, I can angle this this way or this way. I can angle this up and down. So when I'm shooting a photographic subject, I can essentially, have it in the wrong gear, I can essentially control the shape of their face. I can stretch their face on one side. I can change an egg into a ball, so to speak, and do different things where in fixed photography, you don't have any of those possibilities. And that's indeed uh, the most fascinating use of equipment, very inspiring artistically. We'll get back to it after the break. As an artist, I do oil paintings and sculptures and other forms of art. But my main art is large format 8x10 chrome film photography. I create these chromes in 8x10 view cameras and fortunately with advancements in today's digital technology, I can place the film chrome in a flatbed scanner, close the top, hit scan, and now I can achieve results that are very resolute, very high quality. I can get 2,000 megabyte files and greater that accurately reproduce for the digital domain what I did on the original film chrome. This is imperative. As a film purist, many elements go into my work. Sometimes architectural fragmentation, sometimes painted objects, sometimes my oil paintings or my sculptures, and whatever it may be, I need it to be shown as intended the way I created it on the original film. So the digital technologies and the film technologies, the fact that those two worlds are working hand in hand, side by side, is a tremendous asset for me as an artist and a film purist. Alrighty, so we're back and uh, I'm just uh, wondering how old is this camera? I know it wasn't made yesterday, but uh, what is the actual age of this particular equipment? It's a good question because for so many years I shoot on location and I've used older versions of this made of wood and the conversation would always be, wow, look at that antique piece of equipment. And I've had to stop people and explain, and particularly this camera shows it, that this is as modern as it gets. There's nothing sharper, there's nothing more modern in photography. And we've discussed in our last episodes that nothing digitally can compare. Even the large size medium format digital backs that have very high resolution can't come close to the 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 megabyte files I can get from scanning an 8x10 Chrome. But these cameras started way back in the day, in the 18th century late, mm -hmm. where there was no such thing as a single reflex camera, where you could look through a prism, well, which would invert the image. was created back then. Exactly. So these do go way back. But this is a modern Sinar. It's very expensive, and it's the latest and greatest, if you will, way to do pure photography, and really fine art photography in my case, because there are other assets for me. On the 8x10 ground glass, we were discussing portraiture. 
I will shoot a portrait. I will then, not to get too technical into the process, but I will then usually, as a form of pin registration, sketch out the outline of exactly where my subject is. And it's a bit tedious for the subject, because mm -hmm. they have to sit still and bear with me for a moment when I do this. Absolutely. A, a good example is in one of the shots I did recently of my son in a light bulb. I had to have him sit completely still, and he was only three years old at this time. So it was remarkable that I got his patience for this shot. Oh, remarkable parenting, I would say. Well, well, check this out. He had to sit still in front of the camera. The lens I used then did not have a shutter that I could just click the camera. So what I had to do is I had to say, Romeo, sit completely still and look into the camera. So he sat still. I opened up the back of the camera. I put in a film holder. I put a board in front of the lens. I pulled out the sleeve, I hit a strobe manually, I actually moved the board first, hit the strobe manually, recording the image on the film, at which point I quickly covered back up the lens, put the sleeve back in, and I had my shot, and, and it was a miracle. I mean, I can't believe that he sat so still, because if he moved from here to here, he would have been out of frame, he wouldn't have been in the bulb. It was remarkable that the patience I got from him achieved the shot. So it's no different when I shoot with celebrities or anyone that I do a portrait well, that of. That was actually my next question. Most of the celebrities tend to have very serious opinion and image of themselves. It's probably not so easy to convince them to go through a tedious process like this. Well, what's also interesting about this is this camera is big and in somewhat ways intimidating. In a way. And I kind of like that for portraiture because I want to expose something unique in my subjects. And my subjects always can feel that I'm fairly intense about my process. So they're very lenient with me, if you will. Uh, and they're very nice about it because they see me you know, moving super fast. I'm very courteous. I care about my subjects. I want to get something fantastic. And they can see that that's foremost, that it doesn't matter that you're a celebrity in the end result of the shot. If you're a celebrity and I fail, I, I feel really bad. I always want to get something unique and special. So right. I get great cooperation. And again, when you're sitting right in front of that lens, you tend to not be able to hide from it, if you will. Absolutely, it really displays very vividly gr the gravity of the moment. I don't remember which artist it was. I mean, this was Paul Strand. It was one of those early pioneers of photography that I spoke about previously, uh -huh. who shot with view cameras, and he did something really unique, which was he actually took pictures of his subjects, not through the taking lens that people thought they were getting their pictures taken you know, through. Mm -hmm. It was a different lens on the side somewhere. So he was getting sort of a candid art That's photography a very shot. That's interesting approach. Yeah, yeah. right? Basically, what he was uh, replicating on the side of the viewer is what happens with photographer photographing with rangefinder camera. Yes, one absolutely. of the biggest differences uh, between classical rangefinder and uh, SLR, you have to get used to the slightly shifted field of view. Yes, absolutely. That's what a lot of people actually switching nowadays to film uh, don't realize. But uh, as I understand, these cameras also have digital bags, bags manufactured for them, right? Which is really a great thing because you can simply remove the rear frame, put on a digital back, and shoot digitally, yet you can still achieve what I was speaking about earlier, perspective control on a digital file directly. Huh. So it's definitely as modern as it gets, and anyone who cares about perspective other than the lenses you use. I mean, many lenses will give you like pin cushion distortion or barrel distortion and all these other things, vignetting. You have all kinds sure of problems. Like all of those things. I mean, which are great when you use them artistically and you know what you're doing because that's a whole, it's a whole other discussion actually, but you're limited to only that with a fixed camera. Indeed. Whereas with an A10 view camera, the shape and size of objects and all these other things you can do with parallel displacements and angularity is all important for, you know, especially yeah. for me in the, in the kind of work that I do where I'm trying to go way beyond. You see, we approach this completely differently. You found yourself a piece of equipment which is as versatile as possible, 
I, on the other hand, just started to learn about properties of different lenses and have lens for virtually any situation I can imagine. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's actually fascinating. These lenses on the 8x10 view camera that throw giant circles are only one part of what's possible. I can use this giant lens and I can throw a circle that covers the whole film all at once and I can do double exposures mm -hmm. and create interesting images but I don't like to reveal too much of the secrets behind what I do as an artist Absolutely. as a magician doesn't like to tell his secrets but I'm not afraid also to share a little bit of it as a artist I want to create art first and I really don't want to teach art but I will honestly and openly answer and engage in any conversation where I hear someone ask me something who's really interested in the process so one thing I'll give away right now is that I can also use different format lenses lenses that throw smaller circles smaller images so I can then fill up the ground glass at different specific points different imagery can now take over and I can photo montage or do collages and do overlays and get really interesting in the way I'm composing I have every lens that's imaginable just like for 35 millimeter a normal focal length is 50 millimeters wide angle can be 18 28 millimeters super telephoto can go all the way up to 600 millimeters in 8 by 10 the normal focal length is 300 millimeters yes. so the formula is 35 millimeter format times 6 mm -hmm. 50 times 6 is 300 and as you would need in smaller formats a wide array of lenses to achieve everything I need the same with 8x10 lenses and I particularly love Rodenstock, Schneider, you know Leica there are, there are a number of ma lens manufacturers that are just tremendous and in another sense there's no such thing as a bad lens to a great artist because I can take any lens give me a magnifying glass if you have me somewhere and I have nothing else and I will create something very unique. I might take you up on it and look through my stash and find something. We was talking about uh, this fascinating camera, the fascinating work you do, and uh, we started with celebrities in a way, being a little vain. And uh, I do believe that it's still always more important to look at the artist's work. I was recently applying to one of the uh, expos that goes on in New York, and one of the questions was diplomas, and I specifically replied, "I have quite a few, but." I don't see how it's relevant to my art. So you indeed created a lot of uh, fascinating uh, works with celebrities, and uh, you created a lot of the works where celebrities not to be found. It's either your son, an animated object, and piece of architecture. Sure. And in my opinion, they're all equally important in terms of art. Maybe in a few uh, hundred years from now, the ones with the names that will remain famous will uh, be remembered because of that better but I do believe that we need to remember things for their artistic value and uh, essence not for even what is pictured on them and I would imagine you at least to a degree agree with me on that I do appreciate that viewpoint I care first and it might sound a little bit like an oxymoron because I want my art to get fame and to get world recognition yet me personally being famous that's that's not what I care about when I shoot anyone when I've wowed these celebrities we're talking about or anyone that's interested in photography when they come to me and say 
oh my God, look at what you did, you're a great artist. I take a step back and I say, wait, slow down. I do not want attention drawn to me like I'm a great artist, I have talent. That doesn't, that doesn't matter. What matters, really matters to me, is that you look at something I did and I see you getting stirred up by that, where, where I've reached you because you're saying, oh my God, look at what you did here. How did you do that? That's where I feel I've won as an artist, where I, I want to create to, to blow you away with what you're looking at, with what I've done, not to look at me. Keep the camera off of me. Let the camera and the spotlight stay on the art itself because I think that's my greatest asset. I've built a body of work that's very diversified and it includes Indeed. a lot of different subjects, celebrities being some of them. So if attention is drawn to any of these subjects and people are moved by it, well then as an artist I've really, really achieved something. So it's like vanity and my ego, I don't need that padded or boosted. I want my work to be really the first thing that is acknowledged where I know I reached you or I know, you know I can see by your reaction that your first impression was special or feeling that what I did was special and that's really what, it's, what art should be about. And, uh, this approach is a sign of a true artist, reach out of doubt. Well, thank you. Are. And uh, I'm pretty sure you will create many more beautiful works with celebrities or without doesn't matter as long as they are uh, just as beautiful, deep and interesting as the ones we already seen. And just to conclude it, I'm sure that you're probably suffering more than any other photographer from one stance, all photographers with professional camera here. Oh, you gotta be, uh, you gotta take a very good pictures. You have such a big camera. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you've heard it. So. Hopefully today we explained a little bit to those who was watching and listening that even though it's a fascinating camera, it's still not about the camera. It's about the artist and about art. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. It was a pleasure as always. Absolutely. found that worth watching as much as I did. I'm Mark for Roundtable. Thanks for watching. See you next week.